Before we get into today's video, I would like to thank all of my lovely channel members and especially my lovely darling stewards. Bella Mare, Husky HD, Hopeful, Mystic Jade 111, Giovanni Moretti, Twilight Mia, Angry Boxman, Hella, Melofia, Anonymous Weep, and Nicodemus D. Thank you for your support and also a huge thank you for all of my darling mates for your continued support. Now I hope you enjoy the video and please remember to like, comment and subscribe. Thank you. The road to hell was paved with good intentions. Well, the road to heaven on the other hand seemed to be paved in gold. So who are you to judge? Honestly, you, you didn't know how long you had been on it. It seemed to stretch on for all eternity, with a grand, equally golden city just at the horizon, compelling you forward. And aside from that, you're given nothing. Occasionally, you came across a traveler, a wayward soul like you, sitting at the side of the road, taking a break from walking or just enjoying the admittedly beautiful view. Up here, a feeling of calm was ever-present, and a sense of finality was almost creepily present everywhere. Truthfully, if it hadn't been for the 100% definiteness of your death, you would have thought this was a super long and quite boring dream. Though, at the same time, the longer you walked, the fuzzier the memory of your death became. No other memory was affected by this as well. You still remembered your name, parents and your original appearance. While well, you didn't have a mirror on hand, by your hands alone, you could tell massive things had changed. For one, you had a big cup size, which was always appreciated. Your hair was no longer black, but blonde. And while in life you had a pixie cut due to the hot weather where you were living, now it was long and frizzy. Your skin had lost all its blemishes, ugly little bumps and freckles. Now it was delicate and smooth, like someone brought a ballerina doll to life. And rather than wearing the hospital gown you had been wearing in your final moments, you were put in a white Greek-style toga held together by a golden string. You also had a little halo. It looked like a holographic white glowing floating eye with two small bird wings. You had tried touching it, but your hand just waved through it as if it wasn't really there. As if it had a mind of its own, it just curiously looked at you and the surroundings, sometimes flapping its wings. You didn't know how long you had been walking, and you had stopped counting the others you came across. And yet, you couldn't really share their sentiment of letting things go, of just enjoying the walk. The city could wait, yeah right. Then again, you didn't feel hunger or thirst. Heck, you even had no more cravings for energy drinks. But what was strangest was how you didn't mind this. Thinking about it, you always dislike moving. You just wanted to lie in bed all the time. You crossed your arms and thought, yeah, why did you qualify for this? Weren't you lazy your entire life? Wasn't that like a deadly sin or something? And yet you continued walking. Over the past, well, hours, could be days, weeks, the city had slowly started coming closer. And just as very faintly past the horizon you could make out a golden wall around the city, you decided this was it. Time to take a break. Unprompted this time. Not stopping because of a travel on the road, but because you felt like you finally had made progress. Allowing yourself to sit down, you let your feet hang down the golden road. Why was this so fulfilling? You wouldn't get your answer to that until much later, when you finally arrived at the city's gate. 
Before it stood an angel, a beautiful one at that, dressed in a pastel teal robe. He had waved at you the moment you could make out his silhouette. He was the first being you spoke to in a while. Embarrassed, you tapped your fingers together as you approached him. Welcome to heaven, he said joyfully. Almost embarrassed, you muttered, Uh, hi. He waved timidly. Whoever this was, he was cute and handsome and... Oh god, you were blushing. You must have had a long journey behind yourself. You're lucky, actually. <laughs> I was about to close up shop for the day, and then you would have to wait 12 hours. Though, maybe by now that might not be as long of a time for you, right? I... I don't know. He nodded carefully. I need your name and both country and continent of origin. You gave him the information. You have a really nice name. I'm St. Peter, by the way. You didn't understand much of the Bible, but you recognized the name as important. And truth be told, you had been an atheist all your life. Why were you up here again? And why were you feeling embarrassed over that fact? What's with that face? He asked. I... Uh, I just didn't expect the gatekeeper of heaven to be so... <laughs> Wonderful, kind, friendly... Handsome... Peter blushed. Uh, oh, dear. He chuckled. It was rare someone flirted with him. Not to mention, before they even entered heaven. I don't know how to respond to that. Sorry. After a moment of silence, he finally perked up again. There is still some paperwork you need to fill out once you're let inside. First, however, I have to check a couple of formalities. You nodded, and then he flipped through the pages of his book. You were standing there like a pig to the slaughter, feeling incredibly small. He flipped to another page. So have you considered which banner you'd like to be part of? Banner? The seven heavenly virtues. Heaven has layers to it, each layer representing a virtue that you belong to. I just think it's funny asking that question. You see, some people say they want to be in charity, believing that to be them at their most virtuous, only to then be sent to diligence. It's, uh... <laughs> Uh, just a gallows of humor, I suppose. I see. I, 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 I don't know any virtues. He nodded slowly, his eyes never leaving the pages that he was going through. That is fully okay. I deal with people who don't know the scripture at a constant basis. Finally, he looked up from the book, still with the same calm smile. I'm sorry I can't find your name. Your eyes widened. Have you done all this for nothing? The horror in your eyes hurt her soul and quickly he raised a hand. That's perfectly okay. It just means I need to get a different book from around the time you died. Uh, do you remember by any chance the year? Uh, 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 two, two, 2015? It's... 2024, that was nine years ago. Your jaw dropped. I've been walking for nine years? Ah, that's nothing. Um, just last year I let a Japanese swordsman inside. He died in 1912. Ah. You look behind yourself. That kind of made sense. Some of the people you met down the road said they didn't know how long they've been just sitting there, taking breaks. Some of them had strange accents you never heard of, and one was definitely an 80s disco freak when alive, judging by his admittedly heavenly afro and propensity for saying, Groovy. The road to heaven is infinitely long, child, and where you get placed is up to fate and the sins you committed in life. But I hope you cherish the fact that the ones that you committed never reached the gravity of that of an actual sinner. Are you sure? I, I mean, I feel like I was spending most of my days sitting in bed, playing video games. Or, well, 
you know, isn't that sloth? And yet, you had a job, friends, a life. <laughs> you weren't homeless, were you? Not that being homeless means you aren't virtuous. I'm certain you had a nice life. And I hope you can appreciate it by now. You were a good person, is what I'm trying to say. Saint Peter closed the book. Anyways, I'll be getting the book of names from 2015. It will only take a moment. From his back sprung two large wings, and you watched him fly away, leaving you standing there. Void still, that this was all a big mistake. <sighs> what if you were cast to hell, especially looking like this? Oh god, what would they do to you down there? You looked up at your halo and it blinked back at you. Yeah, that thing wouldn't help you. St. Peter, however, returned soon, with another book under his arm. Come, sit with me, while I search through it, okay? You blushed, walking towards the edge of the road, sitting down with him to your right. I didn't expect this at all, you finally said. He stopped searching and gave you his full attention. When I was walking the road, all I could think of were the things that made me think I should go to hell for that. That's the point of the road. To reflect. To be thankful of the life you lived. While I have the final say in it, that is just a mere formality. The simple fact that alone that you appeared on the road is enough to allow you inside. After a moment of silence, he continued his work. What is this city, then, if it isn't heaven? We call it Central, he said. It's where souls go while we process them. Or, in other words, you live here until we have decided which virtue fits you the most. He chuckled. <laughs> but, of course, all souls are free to return to Central whenever they desire. Could I go to another virtue, then? St. Peter tilted his head. There are only two kinds of angels who can do that. Heaven-born angels and nomadic angels. Nomadic? Some innocent ones, innocent ones like you, the people that go to heaven, still have committed a lot of sins and therefore don't fit any singular virtue. Also, it could be that they were highly diligent but also charitable, that would be the good version of a nomadic angel. Either way, these special angels we allow to travel between the realms of heaven, as they don't seem to fit anywhere. Finally he stopped. Ah, there you are. Your heart felt like it melted hearing that. Don't you? You belong here. He smiled at you so brightly and you blushed. <laughs> Thank you, you said. This wasn't me. I'm just doing my job. He placed a hand on your shoulder. This was you. This is what you deserve. You did good. I feel like you needed to hear that. You broke out into tears and embraced him. Oh, <laughs> oopsie. I guess you still think I'm handsome, huh? Oh, my child. He gently rubbed over your back, making you pull away until we were looking into each other's eyes. His smile softened ever so slightly, and he brushed some of your hairs out of your face. You came closer. But then, just as your lips were about to touch, he placed a finger on yours. I've been doing this job for a very long time, my child. You need to put a little more effort into that. If you want me, I mean. Even though you were a little disappointed, he had just given you a goal. When he put his finger down, he chuckled at your determined look. Not even a foot into heaven, you're already making yourself new goals. Don't you want to relax? 
do you want to relax with me? He nodded with a widened smile. I admit, that one was good. In fact, I think it deserves a reward. He then pushed forward, his lips touching yours. They were warm and unbelievably soft. Your eyes rolled back. He wasn't even using his tongue. How was this feeling so good? After a few tender moments that made your heart race and brain almost melt, he pulled away, leaving you a little blue bald. Take that as encouragement, my child. So you're saying I have a chance? He gently patted your cheek. As I said, it won't be easy, but setting yourself goals is always nice. Just do me a favor, okay? He said quietly, and you nodded. I want you to relax for a few weeks, okay? You have a long road behind yourself. While I know you aren't tired, please take care of yourself. Okay. He smiled and stood up, walking over to the gate, you closely behind. He inserted a key into the keyhole and opened heaven up for you. And you found yourself on a giant plaza with a big fountain in the middle. Many roads, paths and walkways went everywhere through the city like a spider's web. But before you primarily stood an imposing golden but parallel before you stood an imposing golden building, the tallest one of the entire city. Big enough to be seen from anywhere inside of Central, and the first thing a soul like you saw when appearing on the world. This is the Senate building, said Peter. Go in there for your paperwork and an interview. After that, you're free to do whatever you want. You turn to face him. Thank you. Peter smiled softly at you. And I guess, since you're such a fan of me, I guess I'll see you soon. You nodded energetically. Thank you, St. Peter. And so, you trotted into heaven. Well, 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 look at you! Peter shuddered as he heard Adam's voice sound right behind him. Oh, hello, Adam. What's wrong, my guy? <laughs> he nudged him with his elbow. How long have you been watching me? Long enough to see you make out with a wayward soul, you fucker! He said that last word with the enthusiasm of frat bro fist bumping a new pledge. So are you gonna screw? P please don't use this foul language. Adam broke out into violent laughter. <laughs> well, if you don't want her! Adam stretched with a happy groan. Uh, I could use some more tail in my harem. Peter's right eye twitched. Oh no, this poor woman has a long rope behind herself. Don't you dare! Adam's eyes narrowed. You just raised your voice at me. Hmm. The eyes of the first man to walk the earth buried deeply into St. Peter's, who was suddenly feeling really small. Let's see who gets her first. St. Peter blushed. Oh no. He would not let you become one of Adam's little playthings. You were too sweet, too innocent for that. Peter's wings feathers puffed up in anger, but in response, Adam just laughed and floated away. 